and welcome back everyone to Beyond the Stars for this match between Cerebral Assassins and Admiration. We are on that Dark Saloon and the teams chose the Doctor, the Legion or the Wraith. So we do see the Doctor coming out first from that one guy. We do see Corrupt Intervention, Rancor, Pop Goes the Weasel and Pain Resonance. A very interesting build here and we do see that Ace is taking the first chase at the Shack not getting the shock so far staying safe here and uh, this opening chase is going to be really really important and therefore it's going to be a great first shock and a hit here and our ace actually not running co towards the corrupted generators so you do allow the kids to chase in the active generators here yeah, and this is going to be tough. You had mentioned as far as with the build itself, a rather interesting here. You talk about the pain resonance and the pop goes the weasel. So I think it shows some confidence coming out and expecting to be able to pile down a lot of hook states. But that does mean D here is going to really need to make sure they do just that, as we already see one survivor doing a good job rotating over, taking the hit, making this chase take a little bit longer. It does allow our survivor to move towards the TNL portion of the map here that's back by the water tower itself. Actually, it looks like because the time that's taking in this chase, it looks like D's actually going to break the chase here. And this is going to be big because we do see actually the reset had already come across on our survivor who had taken the hit. And this is just more time that has passed. We're talking about we're already at like 110 seconds into the actual trial. It's like restarting all over in another chase. <laughs> not going to be hit onto the Kate as well here, so you lost two minutes into the trial. If Ace finds a reset, it would be a complete restart, basically, with the only problem that you lost a full perk from your loadout. We're taking the chase back towards these houses here. Ace has done a really, really good job earlier. Kate kind of double backing back into the killing. So this is going to be a hit now, but she is holding W towards the main building. A very, very strong tile on the Dead Ox Saloon. We haven't taken care too much about this building yet. We do see here that the walls still need to be broken and there is going to be a survivor lurking around already, so they might take another hit here. There he is, the Ace, but needs to retreat as the power can be reached though. It looks like Aberration comes as really, really coordinated here and we are now around 3 minutes 30 into the game and the control on the killer side over this trial is still missing. Yeah, and you know, with it getting further and further into the trial, with us only seeing the one gen complete, does lead me to believe that our survivors here from Aberration are probably splitting this pressure amongst multiple gens here. Also, we do see again a good job by the ace to be able to rotate in this, trying to set up for the protection hit, and even able to use a body block to kind of force it into the actual tile itself which is going to cost just a little bit more time. Not only is it time, but it's also potential for some frustration to build up from the killer because we're still looking at zero hook stages, now breaking down the breakable wall on the front side of our saloon here. Keep working this uh, tile here really well. Now moving towards the corner, it does not look like we have this pallet up, so it's just going to be about burying themselves as far into this corner as possible, prolonging as much time as they can, maybe even getting our team from Aberration here enough time to complete generator number four. And this would be really, really incredible. Oh, no. And what are they doing now? Are they going for a saboteur with a breakout? Now you do need to go for the other hook here. If this is going to work out, it would be horrible for <laughs> our killer here. You really need that hook and it's not coming through. They're getting it off. Kate wiggling free here. And there's going to be here protecting this survivor also. So this is now three survivors injured in the trial here. Ace on a run together with the Nia and the Kate. Potentially Zarina coming in very, very soon. Ace should also reach this window here. No, he's going for a fake. So this is going to be a 360 ah! to the grab. But Aberration really starting to shine here. Yeah, Aberration doing a fantastic job breaking out all the stops. Ah! Breakout plays, doing the salvo plays, coming in for the protection hits, prolonging the first down, just putting down so much pressure onto D here right now as far as when it comes to on the killer side. We do see it does still have a little bit of a nice gen spread on the, this portion, but that is now going to be 
generator number four getting complete off in the distance here. And that is also going to be a couple of survivors that are around here that we might be able to chase down. But right now you're talking about needing, I mean, you really would like to get somebody onto the ground and have somebody else in chase, honestly, by the time the unhook comes in, try and build up a snowball and instead D kind of prioritizing just the defense on the gens itself. And you can't blame them, but like right now, something's got to give. We need something very soon, and we potentially even need to see something like a slug or anything that puts up a little bit of risk here, or we find the ranker quickly, go for a full elimination, and then take another fresh hook into the end game here. But we really, really need something, because I do feel like generator number five is not far away, given the efficiency of team aberration here. We do see Kate going into the next chase, and our killer has to break it in order to keep control over this generator. So two different generators is at minimum going to be repaired here. They are kind of close together. This is what could work into your favor here. But the issue is if you want to make that work, you need a hook stage in your three gen setup here. And given that aberration is keeping it slow, coordinated and already coming for the resets again, it's going to be really, really tough. Yeah, I mean, we can just see the survivors being very well coordinated, doing a very good job with their communication, making sure they're free leaving, making sure they're keeping very well spread out. So that one guy D here doesn't even have the option to be able to put pressure onto multiple survivors. Now going to be seeing taking the chase here with Kate. That is going to be an M1, but Kate's going to be retreating deep into the portion of the map that's relatively far away from the rest of our generators here. So that means that that should allow at least you would think two of our three survivors that are also working in the trial just be paired up on a gen trying to complete the last generator then working towards the doors itself because right now sitting at only one stage even if this chase were to result in a down you would love that situation here for your survivor uh performance to start off your best of one series here for aberration it must feel really, really good. And, and we're talking about dynamic and mindset a lot, right? And Aberration is pulling one good play after good play here. And uh, that really, really puts them into a dynamic that could make them unstoppable here. Still one oak stage. Now we're going into a tough location here. Zarina has to work with a really, really tight pallet. So this is going to be a quick down reset in the distance onto the Kate here. Would be surprised if they're coming in for a sabotage play here because the hook is so close. So we're not going to see that. And our killer is rotating over towards the midsection here. So making sure that the survivors that are now getting hooked I'm moving closer towards this triangle over here and this uh, is going to be the strategy for our killer here but you might run out of time and if we are going to the end game with two maybe three hook stages then aberration has a huge potential to put up a really really incredible score. Yeah, and I was going to say, I mean, you had to keep in mind, we went over to kick the one gen that was at 75%, and that wasn't even the one that had gotten hit with the pain resident. So we know the other one was definitely really close, as we had seen getting complete not too long after that. So now just having to power the doors here, we see already have a decent spread across the way from our survivor. It does look like Boltar does have the attention of our doctor here, currently moving ah! towards the shack <laughs> itself. One of the survivors that you wouldn't mind also, uh, you know, getting found here at the end game since they have already been hooked. That's less stages ah! that you'll be surrendering up to our killer. But of course, there is the Rancor in play here. So that means we're going to be seeing the Mori. Ah! You always love to see when the Mori plays come out. You happen to see it's always a shocking experience with the Doctor as well. But that's going to uh, result <laughs> in only four stages here for our Doctor. That's going to be a huge result. We'll have to see how our killer turns up and sh shows up in our next round after a very All right, let's take another trip on back into the fog here. This time going to be seeing Cerebral Assassins out on the survivor side here. Going to be needing to limit the amount of stages here to Boltar coming out also with the Doctor here in response to the Doctor from the Cerebral Assassins. And of course, through this round, no exhaustion perks being able to be allowed does restrict our survivors here a little bit. And even with those restrictions, we see Boltar able to find a very, very fast out. 
absolutely incredible when you're going into the game like this with the already huge win condition you have prepared for yourself just a few hook stages into the trial here then on top of that the survivor team being really restricted as they have no access to any exhaust perks or a decisive strike um, it's going to be even better for you and there we do see the pressure coming out onto the survivor team with another tag onto the ace here now we do see someone is leaving the generator over there some unfortunate rng skill check when you're leaving now a rescuer over there busy as well so potentially and with the hex ruin here a lot of regression coming in onto several assassins maybe even with a gen pressure that is still towards zero here why we have the potential immediate reho coming in yeah, this is going to be tough. You had mentioned, right? No decisive strike even available makes the uh, decision to tunnel that much easier here. So that's already two hook states. One survivor on the verge of being able to be eliminated. And the corrupt isn't even off of the gens yet. We actually still have about 10 seconds left on the corrupt intervention, actually pushing towards the t front portion of the saloon, actually heading towards the far side. We do have, I think that was the ace that we had seen there. I believe it was the end survivor. And Voltar is going to take this time here to go ahead and start breaking up what is a very strong tile being the main building here on the deadest of dogs looks like even we had somebody getting caught out position that's gonna be the ace unfortunately dropping back into the ah! saloon as Boltar is moving back into the saloon and that's now going to be a third yeah. hook here only just yeah. what two and a half minutes into this trial that is insane this is when you are coming in ready to go and really really know what you are doing on your killer it's going to be a shock onto the survivor over here. The Hex Ruin doing work for you, Kate, running towards the hook location as well, making it difficult for any incoming rescue. And a nice and beautiful shock here, allowing the immediate injury. And now Kate running to the main building here. But if that would be a quick down, you kind of get it next to the hook survivor so it's important that they're getting the ace off the hook right here and this is going to be the next down straight away so cerebral assassins at this point running after the pressure that bullet is putting up here survivor after survivor getting on a hook right here this killer is not here to joke around yeah, and I think even there now, it's, I mean, you talked about you've already spread your fresh hooks around. You're getting the extra points. I mean, your next hook here gives you the decision that you want. Not going to be able to find the connection with the first M1 here. This time, though, the down onto the ace who's dropping right in front of a locker. We see the turn away from there in case we have somebody who is set up for a potential flashlight save on the backside. But instead, this is now going to be the decision at this point. All already five hook stages that quick talk about boltar being able to come out and really put the pedal down to the metal and build up the pressure here very quickly now going to be getting a big static blast get you a little bit of additional information you do see that we have a survivor here the school of steve trying to move towards the main building itself should probably have ways or not have waited around quite so long probably wanted to build up a little bit of additional distance but it does allow for the save behind us and steve is able to get back around this big tile now we do also see what kind of pain the main building of Dandox Saloon can create when you're not taking care about these breakable walls early on. You need to drop the chase here once again. This is now going to be the Feng taking a hit instead and Hex Ruin doing once again work. So Steve surviving at the main building there and forcing Volita to drop doesn't really matter because the killer immediately finds someone else and just applies the injury onto this survivor. We do see the chase coming through onto the main building now. So this time we're going to see the commitment, a shock coming in to prevent the vault from this window right here. It's going to be the drop, but no exhaust perks on this map. So this is going to be a quick hook into hook stage number six and Given the fact that we are still with three objectives that need to be repaired, and this being an elimination, I do see the potential 4K rising up at the horizon. Yeah, and you talk about being able to do this you know, in your qualifiers and your early part of the Beyond the Stars action here. I know you and I often talk about when it comes to competitive DVD, you know, when it talks, we, we talk about momentum. So you come out in here in a best of one series and you limit the amount of stages on one side. Like you said, if you can come in and get four out 
on the same map, even with the same killer when mirror matches weren't even required in this round, would definitely have you feeling really good. We do see though breaking away from the uh, chase at the main building. We do see that we found some survivors over here, though one of them being an injured ace will not be able to make it to the window. That's now going to be another down. Boltar just keeping the pedal down to the metal and just really kind of enjoying a nice little victory lap here on the saloon. And the next hope stage coming in even Oh, once again, being an elimination. So the two we want scenario now. This is going to be really, really tough for our survivor team. You might want to think about an end game play here in order to take a nice score out of this qualified team. A good fit for several assassins because this team always fighting until the very end, putting up the best possible performances. So I wouldn't be surprised if they um, leave with a little miracle here and make an end game play happen. Unfortunately, Kate not finding a long chase here. So it's going to be Scooby Steve, but you, we, you might remember Scooby Steve. He's known for some cheeky plays sometimes. So maybe we see him walk out of the door here, but it seems like he's prioritizing this last generator for now. Yeah, it looked like maybe it was just trying to get the moral victory of getting the gen done. However, also maybe by Boltar coming over here and hearing a whole lot of progress on this gen, it might cause them to try and spend more time searching around for the survivor and, oh, I was gonna say, maybe allow them to get away for the save across the, uh, the map, but that's not the case here. It's actually gonna be Scuba Steve hanging around the main building here as we do see the elimination across the way. We do see that was a couple of missed skill checks here. Might allow for a little bit of separation. You talked about those cheeky plays to get the escape itself here, but Boltar is in the uh, power position being on the bottom floor, and there is going to be the hatch. The adrenaline kicks in, which gives you an extra health state, but you'll see on the right side of your screen, healthy or not, it's only going to take one and one to run around. Now going to be the final chase for our Steve here. Hopefully a very nice run for several assassins going down in the main building here. This window being really strong. So nice pathing from our survivor right here. Mind game coming out by Bolita, but not going to bamboozle our Steve. It's actually the other way around, losing track for a second here. So uh, Steve making sure that they're going to leave a great impression of uh, several assassins in this tournament here and uh, what we mentioned right this team always fighting to the very end here unfortunately the no one escapes death wrapping up the things here so it's going to be aberration taking the win in this qualification match and uh, all i can say is that aberration is going to be a really really difficult opponent in the main stage yeah, I mean, Aberration has been one of these teams for a while now that we have been seeing, you know, being able to put up some rather consistent results across competitive DVD. And we kind of saw it on display here again, why they've been able to do so. They were able to limit the amount of stages on one side, and then Boltar able to come out here and shutting things down before you even have to worry about the exit gates. Right now, Aberration has shown that they are here to play, and I can't wait to see what they do uh, further on in the tournament here in Beyond the Star.